Yes, every, every, everywhere in Europe, we, uh, we, we know them that effectively the, uh, the broadcasters uh, uh, went on the top of the audiences, uh, especially for you, youngest, yes, as you, uh, as you mentioned. But I, unfortunately, I think it's uh, just a window. It was uh, considering to, uh, it was linked to, uh, to the COVID. And uh, yeah, a lot of uh, yeah, um, public broadcasters took initiatives in order to uh, let uh, the programs uh, to uh, the young uh, for education, uh, for, uh, yeah. So uh, the mix of broadcaster and public service of education was very strong everywhere in Europe. So uh, maybe was it bubble uh, in terms of audience because uh, at the end of the day, when they come back to school, they don't have any more time to, to watch TV. So uh, yeah, about that, we, uh, we must consider that it could be a bubble, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, what is really very interesting, uh, yeah, despite this bubble system maybe, is the fact that they come back to a linear broadcaster. Uh, yeah, and so we don't know exactly what could be changed uh, when they uh, will come back to uh, their traditional platforms or services. Uh, because I think they appreciate the fact that we, we take them by the end <laughs> in order to, to, to give them programs adapted to, to their needs. So we up, uh, yeah, USPA, our national associations, Hope that uh, this trend could be confirmed uh, yeah, after the COVID crisis. Uh, but even if it's not the case in terms of audiences, as I said, we, uh, we, we will consider all the surveys about uh, yeah, the users of the young after this crisis with a lot of interest because it could, it could help us to understand uh, yeah, how they reacted to an offer plat uh, yeah, linear service rather than a non-demand service. I think it, it will be interesting maybe in one year to have uh, yeah, feedback about that. This, uh, yeah, this was um, the, the huge change we, uh, we, uh, we observe uh, for now 10 years. It's exactly the, uh, the switch between uh, the offer services driven by uh, the broadcasters 24 hours per day and the on-demand uh, yeah, market. But uh, yeah, I must say that maybe we'll the time to, to this is that, but the on-demand market is, uh, yeah, is a false name. It's wrong to consider it as purely on demand. It means nothing on demand in terms of uh, when you have 5,000 hours on a service, the term on demand uh, yeah, could reach to nonsense. And uh, yeah. so all the markets are offer markets uh, yeah, based on the offer of programs. Uh, but uh, yeah, one market is, uh, is uh, hidden behind another world which is on-demand service. So the di digital market, it's above all uh, yeah, a switch between 24 programs system to a system by which you feel as free. <laughs> you feel free to, to, to reach your program. Uh, th this is the first change. The second one is the accessibility uh, everywhere, meaning the fact that uh, yeah, the audiovisual market 15 years ago was driven by the families. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, yeah, the houses, the apartments, and so one, one screen and so on, you know that perfectly well. Now, everyone has its own uh, screen. And so it changed also, and the challenge is also to reach uh, yeah, not only a family, but one person. So uh, yeah, the sophistication of uh, yeah, the reach of people is the second big trend. 
And the third is, uh, is driven by the ability for people to, to switch very quickly from a program to an over. So uh, the difficulty we can have is also to keep people in front of a program. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I must say it's it's a kind of um, well, of, uh, when when you want to 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 be a full customer of a program, if I may say, so you need to to think differently about the rhythm of your uh, series, if it's a drama or uh, and so on, because uh, you, the threat is, and after five to ten minutes people can switch. And so, uh, yeah, I think these three changes are major. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, f four, the, the fourth one is uh, yeah, the ability for, uh, yeah, for the clients of the producers, meaning uh, the investors, to be now worldwide, not at all uh, yeah, national. Uh, the territory, uh, all the audiovisual market was, uh, yeah, if we consider aside Hollywood and uh, some uh, yeah, some bubble like that, all the uh, the markets were purely national, telenovelas, sitcoms, and so on. Uh, yeah, even in animation, in a certain way, during the nineties, everything was driven by the national market because the main investors were national. It was the broadcasters settle in a country dedicated to one nation or one uh, yeah, kind of people, but not at all worldwide. So the market of the rights, plus the markets of the contents, plus the market of the potential customers has become worldwide. And so now we don't have any more national or European uh, yeah, people in front of us. We have US, Tomorrow it could be Chinese people who are installed everywhere in the world and who are asking local contents, but for a national and a, a international market. And so everything has changed based on these four pillars I described. I think if you consider if, if effectively uh, if you if we have a pure economical approach. Uh, we could have problems uh, yeah, in front of these global players because, as you as you mentioned, uh, the uh, the European market is not a European market. It's uh, yeah, it's a, uh, an addition of uh, national markets. But uh, yeah, the European construction is not based on that about audiovisual services. Audiovisual services are out. Of a competition market, uh, yeah. In a certain way, we are part of a cultural exception. Cultural exception has now changed. The wording has changed to cultural diversity, and cultural diversity in Europe is based on the language. And uh, we think uh, you you can. Uh, yeah, I think I'm sure that in every country in Europe, uh, yeah the national works, especially in drama, are generating the main audiences. Uh, yeah. Even if uh, yeah, the, uh, the reputation and so the users turning around some big series com coming from US and so on are very uh, seen uh, yeah, by young people especially, but not only. Uh, the audiences, uh, the mass audience, is always linked to national works in the major countries. I mean, so and platforms know that, know that. Uh, there, there is a paradox about the cultural diversity, which could be the force of Europe. That's why I'm, uh, I, I stop on that a few minutes. If you consider that, platforms know very well that the, the language and the ability for program for work to be linked to one local uh, territory. 
is really very crucial. When we, when we see what they make, they make things which are, a, um, if I may say, very uh, marked up from a country. Uh, I think all the marketing is now linked to the language and the fact that it is in, uh, in France, in Portugal, in Spain, in Italy, they assume that. But we, you have to, to be reachable and uh, you have to talk to everywhere outside of your country. So it's pretty new. But they, they produce what they say local for an international market. And so in order to, to do that, they know perfectly well that the languages are key in Europe, but not only in Europe. And uh, it's a paradox, but I must say that they open door in, in, in a certain way for that. Because the national broadcasters, uh, yeah, if you consider, just a parenthesis, if you consider the, the COVID crisis, the COVID crisis was everywhere in the world a, uh, a stop for all the productions. No, no Bollywood, no Hollywood, no European contents were produced or shooted during this period. So the market was turned to a, buy, uh, a buying market. I mean by that, all the broadcasters uh, wanted new and fresh works and new and fresh works were uh, yeah, European contents. If you are, if you are for French broadcasters, it could be a Portuguese, an Italian or a Spanish uh, TV drama, which could be new in your country, so fresh, but which has not to be shooted right now because it has already been done. So the paradox was the fact that uh, yeah, we, we were in front of a big appeal from the market to have catalogs. But we weren't able to, uh, to um, answer to that because the process of dubbing was also stopped. And who bought the, uh, the catalogs at the end of the day? It was only the platforms. The platforms because the platforms accept subtitles. Subtitles was, uh, was always possible when broad national broadcasters say no to subtitles and they want dubbed programs, dubbed works. So in a certain way, uh, global platforms, sometimes seen as a devil, uh, yeah, they open door to uh, technical, di uh, uh, cultural diversity. They, they bought, uh, when they arrive in market, they buy a lot of your national, uh, yeah, because they want to be attractive. And in order to be attractive, they have to propose something else than U.S. contents. So, if, if I consider from the production market, this is money more in the, uh, in the tune. The, uh, we could have money more. But after that, the real challenge is just to be seen, to reach the audience. And from that to the audience, all the problems are there because we are linked to the ability of editorialization coming from the services and above all the ability to be reached by the algorithm to be proposed and so on uh, for uh, for the people and from for that it is a dark uh, it is a, a shadow uh, uh, aspect of the online or a, uh, and I say digital market, it's, it could be a good market for buying contents, but it is a hidden market when we consider the real consumption uh, of and the real audiences of all the programs, of all the contents. So the big challenge in the years to come,
for the cultural diversity and so for for ability for languages to exist and for people to 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 see uh, yeah, their streets uh, their uh, yeah, bars uh, their uh, um, way of life it just to be able to find it on these platforms there is also so uh, yeah maybe i'm i'm wrong but if i you can stop me yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah there is an over battle uh, in the digital world it is the battle of the first screen uh, meaning the fact that uh, yeah, all the services now are you know it's like an hamburger yeah you are uh, yeah the subscription you you have you have maybe one two maybe three services with which uh, you have subscribers sometimes you don't know exactly that you are you, you subscribe to that but uh, maybe uh, if you have uh, amazon prime uh, you have also prime video without knowing that but uh, it's a fact that more and more you subscribe thing and so it is an hamburger and so you you have access to services but uh, uh, without a hierarchy and the battle now start to be the first to be the screen by which you interact with the programs and so the battle is just to be the first screen the first access for you to the the old services you you have and this battle i don't know in 10 years if netflix is still a first screen maybe it could be a bundled services more and more in the years to come and if it's a bundle who is managing the bundle who is paying the bill uh, yeah, and so on and so this battle is not really in the mind of everybody when you are talk when we are talking about content and so on but it's a key battle and on that the telecom the telcos uh, yeah, they have all in the end netflix is very strong but when they have to 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 have a good um, i may say good networks uh, yeah, they they will have to to deal with local uh, partners which are telcos and this is very interesting to note that disney plus uh, yeah it's exactly the same strategy the same problem and so on when you want to install in a country, you have two strategies, the OTT or the fact that you are a, uh, embedded in the MSA with an over service. And it is, it is not a technical battle. It is a technical by which you can, you, you can investigate what could be the access to the program in the, uh, yeah, in the future so uh, yeah, we observe also a lot of this ta this type of uh, uh, deal global deal distribution deal because i'm talking about the distribution uh, yeah, deal that uh, they, they have to uh, uh, to sign uh, and these deals are really very national so it's really very interesting to note that uh, even if you have an international uh, footprint for having this footprint you you have to to deal with national market for contents as i explained because you need to uh, to offer language uh, way of life background and so on uh, yeah with a, a territorial footprint and secondly you need to deal for the distribution with local partners and the convergence of the two things uh, it means that in europe we have a kind of force to be separated it's a paradox but it could be the fact that it's not uh, when they enter into europe it means nothing they have to enter into portugal into spain into italy into france it means that each time they have to adapt their process to the local market. 
And it's a force for us because it means that uh, yeah, the European creation, the European way of life, the European cultural diversity is an obligation for them to respect. If, if there is a lack of, uh, of regulation, uh, it's above all about the tax, uh, the taxes, uh, the fact that these, uh, these mogul uh, uh, pay so few, uh, they, they pay no money in the markets in which they are making money. And so uh, the trap is here, first of all. The second thing is a level playing field between all the, uh, the players. You mentioned, uh, yeah, Google is settling uh, the prices for digital advertising everywhere in the world now. So it means that uh, yeah, it becomes a dictature, of, uh, it becomes something which could be a big problem for everywhere, for everybody, even if you have a mass audience, uh, yeah, now the uh, advertisers compare uh, yeah, what could be what could be done. So if we if we are uh, yeah, talking about this market, uh, plenty of things must be uh, must be uh, said about that. Uh, first of all, uh, this market is linked to um, now the ability to reach the individual and not only people. Uh, yeah. So, in order to have that, uh, you need personal data about uh, yeah, what people want, uh, yeah, what, uh, on what they click, on what they approved, and so on. And for that, it's always the battle of the first screen I mentioned. Meaning the fact that Google, you have no advertising on the Google web, uh, website. <laughs> you have no advertising. <laughs> It's crazy. It's hidden advertising. And uh, yeah, you have, for the traditional broadcasters, when they want to be online, they have no access to personal data because they are not the first screen. So the only way for them to track people is cookies. And cookies, in another hand, in Europe, we try to to put, uh, yeah, to put that aside, uh, we, we wanted, and it is normal, it is a European uh, response to uh, yeah, the intrusion of uh, online uh, yeah, uh, services and, uh, and uh, global players. Uh, they wanted to stop the invasion of uh, the cookies. But in another hand, it's cool. In another, it means that only Facebook, Google can win this battle because all the European, uh, yeah, because they are not the first screen I mentioned, they won't have access to what we call in French, publicité adressée. It means advertising which, which is given to you personally. And this is the future of the advertising. This, this will be an advertising. I think, I think it is personal, but I think that uh, maybe in 10, I don't know, 10, 20 years, maybe five years, I don't know. But the traditional commercials on television could be, could be uh, uh, yeah, put out of the system because uh, it won't be relevant at all uh, and so on. So if it's not the case, the advertising market could change for traditional broadcasters and could become a, mod, a, a more hybrid process for generating the turnover. I, I have to maybe take example of what happens in France because the traditional broadcasters now, the group, uh, yeah, them in over to form a, a new platform, new platform which is presented at subscribe video on demand service dedicated to French and European contents. So if this is a response uh, in front of Netflix, so you, you have all the, uh, the big broadcasters, French broadcasters, private and public, all together. And so uh, yeah, this offer 
uh, will, uh, will start uh, this year in France. It will be very interesting because I think the business model of this platform will be hybrid. It will, it will be a complex and sophisticated offer, not only dedicated to on-demand content, but also in order to offer uh, catch-up TV, uh, catch-up services of all these uh, yeah, channels, plus, plus the linear broadcasters. So the offer could be uh, a mix of broadcasters uh, on-demand services linked to the broadcasters, meaning the catch-up TV, uh, uh, yeah, plus and on-demand services, which is mixing advertising and subscription. And so uh, this business model could be a transition, maybe in uh, yeah, for 10 to 20 years, I have no idea. Uh, yeah. And maybe after that, the ability for people to accept advertising in the program could go down and down and down because uh, when we're talking about Netflix and so and co, no advertising anymore during the uh, yeah, the contents. So the uh, this is really very crucial to understand that uh, yeah, internet plus these global players are introducing the idea that we will maybe but i think so uh, we will accept uh, yeah, we won't accept sorry anymore the uh, advertising during a program this is a this is the crucial battle in the years to come not only for our sector but i think for democracy uh, it's because now we we enter in a world in which uh, we we have no contact anymore with the reality without uh, um, uh, a filter which is the screen which is uh, uh, the, what Google say about uh, one thing and so on and this filter is not uh, uh, is not uh, is not coming from uh, European uh, actors or players now it's US and uh, yeah, again it will be Chinese tomorrow. So we, we have to think about the democracy and so on. When we see what happens in the US, uh, the manipulation of uh, the election process by social media, I think uh, we, we will all face these problems. So coming back to our sector, uh, that, that's true that the algorithm is now the next step of the regulation. Well, I don't know uh, if we could regulate the algorithm because it's so complicated to to do that but we can regulate big trends of this algorithm we can regulate the transparency of the uh, algorithm we uh, we are all in mind the fact that uh, every two years google is changing uh, the algorithm of the uh, yeah, of the thing and a lot of smes in europe and worldwide disappear from one day to another because they only change the algorithm and nobody in, is able to understand exactly what happens so the the power they have is really incredible uh, so it, it is now a question of also antitrust because i think uh, the uh, uh, the scale of the enterprises and so the ability for them to uh, drive uh, yeah, the everyday life of people is very huge. It, it, it is bigger than states right now. So uh, I think in US it will be an antitrust uh, process which will, uh, which will start maybe with uh, Facebook and Google. Uh, but coming back to our sector, the algorithm, yes. Uh, I say that in terms of buying, so in terms of turnover, uh, yeah, these global players, it's money more. Right now, it's money more because we, we, have, we have the traditional broadcasters plus that. Okay, So it is 
Uh, it is also surfing on the uh, golden age of the uh, high-end TV series. So definitely this is a, a great convergence for the market. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, they buy, but they don't make these programs visible. Uh, the recommendation process of all the on-demand services um, is really a threat, uh, yeah, really a threat. Uh, yeah. As I mentioned, in Europe now, 30% of the program must be European. Uh, yeah, it means that uh, when uh, yeah, Netflix, Disney Plus, and so on propose programs to uh, people in Europe, they have to uh, at least reserve 30% of these programs to European contents. So on the paper, it's very great. And it was, a, we were very happy about that in CEPI, uh, which is the uh, coordination, European coordination of uh, the independent producers. But this offer of programs is not at all the consumption. So really now we have to work with these platforms in order to make them understand that the recommendation process must push European contents because uh, yeah, it's not possible to consider that people are choosing. The freedom is uh, yeah, the worst argument coming from these platforms. It is not at all uh, the freedom. It, it is in, unbelievable to hear that. Uh, yeah, the on-demand services is by nature an hyper-consolidated market. Because if you want to reach a program, you have to know it. You have to know the brand. So the marketing, the, beef, the, the, the marketing is key for make them know, only know the name of a program. So if, you, if for instance, if you, you take a folder and you, you have a folder, you open content. <laughs> It is the worst solution. <laughs> it means that uh, yeah, you, 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 you generate a, a ghetto of uh, European contents inside your, uh, your website and so on. Uh, but the recommendation process is not at all transparent. You know that a lot of transparency process uh, uh, has been introduced in Europe by uh, several directives, but it has not affected uh, yeah, this part of the uh, business model. And so now the battle is around that. For a pure regulation of algorithm, I don't believe because the algorithm is the key uh, 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 secret market of uh, these players. But to force in their algorithm to uh, yeah, to force in the algorithm the idea that European contents must be at least proposed sometimes, it could be possible. It, it means that you generate only one new rule, two new rules, three rules, and so on. So I believe on that. And I believe on, uh, yeah, and we, uh, we, uh, we begin, of course, to explain that to, uh, to politicians and so on. Uh, but we, we have to, to work with, uh, with platforms on that. I believe also maybe on another thing, which is a little bit touchy, but if you consider the idea that the digitalization is uh, in parallel of the individualization, the individualization is not possible on the algorithm. I, I cannot say, please surprise me. <laughs> I cannot say uh, uh, I, I, I want also uh, you to, to have French or uh, European uh, yeah, contents uh, proposed and so on. I, I can imagine that uh, in a certain way, maybe after, you will choose your major preferences at the beginning, just to be sure that the algorithm is also individualized, but uh, meaning the fact by a, a volunt uh, voluntary uh, intervention in 
uh, what I prefer. And I can imagine that in this individualization, a, uh, a kind of regulation force the idea that at least 30% of European content must be proposed, whatever, uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, the, uh, the consumption uh, uh, coming from the people. And if we consider that, uh, all the battle is in front of us. I think we have five years more to, 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 uh, of lobbying and so on to, uh, to success like that. But if we don't have a success in that, it will be a disaster because the transparency will be, uh, yeah, will be an arm which will be turned under our head. Because as soon as the platforms will mention, okay, I'm transparent now, I will give you all the data about the consumption. Considering <laughs> we are in a new world and now they say uh, that their business model is linked to a big transparency about uh, what is uh, seen and so on. For sure, right now, if we take a picture of that, uh, it won't be European contents who will, uh, will be on the top. It will be US content. So at the beginning of the discussion, we say that at national level for traditional audience and mass audiences and uh, yeah, the broadcasters are generating great audiences with mainly national works or at least uh, yeah, national speaking works. And in another hand, the, the platforms and so on could generate huge audiences because it's worldwide with only few series which are uh, yeah, for sure 100 percent us right now and so because it is a concentrated because all the marketing is assumed for us contents rather than for a european uh, one and so this algorithm approach is very complicated because it is linked to engineering and so on but it is crucial for us to uh, understand exactly what happens and it is crucial for a kind of regulation to enter into this problem maybe not into the uh, the algorithm because it may have no sense and maybe it is a chimera but we we have in a certain way to be interested by the recommendation process because it is the only way to uh, uh, compensate a little bit the lack of marketing cost uh, for European contents in front of US content. When, when, we, uh, when we consider the hybrid uh, uh, approach of the markets, uh, uh, the audience uh, is linked to a, a war, another war, we, we talk about the war of the first screen, but uh, yeah, so the first filter, uh, yeah, but there is a war which is the war of the time. The war of the time is uh, yeah, directly linked to the uh, cultural uh, sector for years. Uh, the television has killed uh, the book or not, it is an old debate. And uh, now Netflix could, uh, uh, could be the devil kiss for a, a certain idea of the broadcasting. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's always the ability for a content, a program, to reach people, to reach meaning to take its time, to, to let him, uh, uh, 52 minutes or uh, 30 minutes for a per episode and to, 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 to keep its time, its time uh, yeah, on that. Uh, if we simplify uh, yeah, the, uh, the cultural uh, aspect on that, uh, yeah, and you can consider that the price of uh, your ticket for uh, yeah, going in a cinema, a cinema theater uh, it could be considered like that. It's uh, maybe 10 euros for uh, two hours of entertainment. And so you can compare 
uh, yeah, with uh, over two hours uh, yeah, and so on. When you uh, buy a book, uh, yeah, how many hours of uh, yeah, uh, yeah, pleasure or uh, entertainment you, you have with this book? And uh, yeah, I, it could be far, <laughs> far away from your question, my, my answer. But uh, I think we have to take into consideration that everybody, even producers, even uh, yeah, authors, when they are considering uh, yeah, a work, they are considering that how can I uh, let one guy, uh, yeah, one woman, uh, one family in front of the screen during 52 minutes. And at the end of the day, it's always the same problem. And it, will be, it has been the problem of broadcasters. It will be the problem for Netflix and so on. Uh, for everybody, it will be the problem. So the audience, a calculation, yes, must integrate all the screens, first of all, and secondly, all the, uh, all the services, not only the broadcasters. The broadcasters don't like that because Netflix is not at all involved in the advertising market. So uh, even if they are on the fifth place uh, during certain nights, or certain evenings, and so on, uh, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not um, a predator for uh, yeah, the uh, advertising market. But at the end of the day, it is a predator for the mass audience. It is a predator for uh, yeah, all the contents uh, yeah, yeah, pushed by the broadcasters, which need, directly need the mass audience to exist. So, we, yes, I, I promote the idea that uh, the transparency must be, uh, must be uh, addressed uh, yeah, at European level about all the audience share, meaning the fact that uh, we need to integrate these services in the audience share because we need to understand exactly where are our di uh, cultural diversity. Because everything is uh, for that. If we, if we have battles in Europe, if we have battles uh, for our interests, it's for the cultural diversity. And before that, just a parenthesis about the independent production, because independent production is not, uh, it was complicated traditionally at national level because uh, yeah, a subsidiary of a broadcaster versus an independent producer, at the end of the day, it was always national content and uh, your Portuguese speaking content we are talking about. So for uh, yeah, all the people, it was a sophisticated battle uh, yeah, for just a cake, a, a turnover uh, of cake. But right now, we all understand that the defense of independent production in front of these global players, which are not European, is the only way to defend the European contents, first of all, the European creation and the European uh, uh, diversity. Because in front of them, we are all independent. Even the, the subsidiary of the broadcasters are independent for these platforms. So it is crucial to understand that now we have to make, to create a convergence of all our forces. So I think uh, what is also a European answer, you, uh, you asked me uh, last time, it's a European consolidation. In a certain way, we need to be able to keep our authors, we need to be able to keep our SMEs everywhere in Europe because the independent production is linked to SMEs because these SMEs are linked directly to the societies. If you want to generate documentaries, if you want to understand exactly what happens in your society, if you want to, to be independent in terms of news, and we understand that in front of the fake news and so on. So we have a, a big place, a big challenge for traditional and serious players in Europe in the years to come. But we'll need the regulation to, you know, to, to engage the discussion on the same level at least, just to generate a level playing field, and not only a level playing field, but the ability for these players to talk each other 
and to talk on the same level of Netflix, Disney Plus, and so on. And so for that, we need the regulation just to, to, uh, to remind them that we need uh, uh, rules <laughs> and uh, yeah, they, they need to respect us. So yes, the time, the time war and the, uh, the first filter war is two wars on which we must be really very focused because everything will be played here. All the contents, all the accessibility of the content, all the uh, interest, I may say, of the contents, the diversity of the contents is crucial. I, uh, I don't know, but I, I think more and more uh, in the years to come, we will have qualitative uh, um, uh, studies about the contents pushed by Netflix and co. And we will see that uh, yeah, I think the ideas, the, uh, the drama and so on are not so large than expected. Uh, yeah, and so uh, I, I think we will have a reaction, a global reaction about that. That's why I think that more and more of the services will be bundled uh, because in order to exist and to have turnovers, they will be in a certain way forced to, to be mixed to other services in order to guarantee the, di uh, the diversity of the offer plus the real diversity of the consumption. I'm pretty sure of that. We'll see, but uh, it is my, uh, my uh, feeling. I think we we have two two types of approaches we we need to to take into consideration for the broadcasting market. The first one is the uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, the broadcasting is still strong for big events. So as soon as it, as soon as it is ev uh, an event, uh, uh, meaning. Um, not sure that the, the word is pretty clear. Uh, an event, they, they are strong. What does it mean? It means that uh, news, sports, and everything which is not original but new. So the first thing I think is just to, for the broadcasters, when we are talking the broadcast, the broadcasting, I think it will become less and less linked to the catalogs. I think it will be more and more a, a new window, the window for new works or events, which are not possible to postpone. Sport, sports is very strong. And more and more, the sports are strong. So for broadcasters, it could be a disaster for them if they lose sports in favor of Netflix, uh, for instance. Uh, so the first one is, is that. Because everything is even on the broadcasting. So in terms of rights, they have to consider that they don't need long-term rights in comparison of Netflix and so on. Because their business model is mass audience, with a big marketed programs which generates this event, I say. So I think uh, yeah, for all the broadcasters right now, they have that in mind and we have to take into consideration this process. The second thing is we have to separate the commercial television and uh, yeah, the public services. Before the COVID, every public broadcasters in Europe were under a crisis linked to the ability for the states to finance uh, these public broadcasters and sometimes with uh, arguments against the public broadcasters, meaning why do we pay that? Because at the end of the day, uh, commercial television is doing exactly the same thing. So the second thing which is clear for us is just the fact that the public broadcasters has a special role to play everywhere in Europe. 
uh, they have to support more sophisticated works. They have to, uh, to uh, make people curious of other things and so on. And after these big words, it means that they have to generate an over-programmation, an over-choice and so on. We, people have to see that they are in front of the public broadcasters. And when we are talking about youth, about uh, yeah, some specific uh, people, it's really very important to, to consider that and so to lobby in favor of a reinforcement and no decrease of the public broadcasters because it is fundamental for the democracy and the uh, di uh, cultural diversity. For the uh, commercial broadcasters, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the difficulty is much more complicated and uh, we, we talk about the advertising. It's not easy for them to, to reach people individually and I think it will be more and more complicated for them. Uh, if I consider the traditional advertising, we can all share the, uh, yeah, the experience that uh, yeah, imagine that you, uh, you enter into Google by uh, yeah, I'm looking for a, uh, a, uh, for a weekend in Paris. So you will have a uh, yeah, and so on. You will choose your hotel. And after that, okay, it's finished. You have always your reservation. But after that, during one month, maybe, you will have advertising pushed in order to offer you weekend in Paris, but you don't care because you already have done. It's crazy because uh, yeah, it is the more sophisticated advertising, but it is always, uh, not always, uh, because, uh, but uh, sometimes totally uh, yeah, yeah, uh, out of date. For, so the television, um, the commercial television, has exactly faced exactly the same problem that uh, traditional websites and so on. It is how to know. It is linked to uh, your personal data. It is linked to this market. I think the what we call the advertising market will be more and more a behavior market meaning the fact that it will be uh, the ability for people to understand exactly what you need. And if they know exactly what you need, it won't be, uh, yeah, it won't be an, a traditional advertising during the program which will, uh, which will alert you. It will be, uh, yeah, you will be bombarded <laughs> of emails, of uh, yeah, calls, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, of links or uh, yeah, very clever uh, contents which are advertising or contents we don't know exactly, but dedicated to your needs. And if we, if we understand that, we understand that uh, for the commercial, it is crucial for them to, uh, yeah, to break the mass audience approach and to reach what is uh, the Google uh, uh, business model for years. So they are too, too far away uh, for, for, from that. So at the end of the day, I think the, uh, the future of commercial television will be an hybridish, uh, hybridish, uh, hybridation of their business model. Uh, uh, they, they, they cannot stay alone as a commercial broadcaster, so they, they will have to to generate also online services and global services, uh, mixing uh, linear uh, broadcasters plus uh, on-demand services, catch up plus uh, free on-demand, for instance. And this business model is able also to generate subscribe uh, yeah, turnover. It's a paradox, but I think more and more the commercial television could generate a subscribe a uh, yeah, turnover coming from telcos because they have added value services which are uh, nowhere else than here. So I think it's a, a big, uh, a big way for them to uh, diversify the turnover. And uh, unfortunately, there there is another one, uh, another one which is the diversification to production. 
but we we don't know we 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 don't like that of course because we represent the independent production but also because it is important and crucial in the media sector that we generate chinese wall between the uh, the systems uh, yeah, because it is a democratic at the end of the day it is a democratic problem if we generate only uh, uh, documentaries which are linked to advertisers because it, this is uh, only this role that they play it means that uh, we won't be able to generate a society able to see the society, uh, the real society. So uh, in a certain way, uh, yeah, the vertical consolidation is not at all, uh, yeah, it could be a business model for sure, but is not at all a democratic uh, yeah, model which is uh, expected in the years to come. So uh, yeah, the diversification, as I may say, is rather more linked to the subscription. Uh, it is the main market in Europe when we are talking about audiovisual is the telco because now it's a major process. It is not at all anymore a, a, the, um, the broadcasters. So uh, the answers, first of all, event. Secondly, public broadcasters. Thirdly, a, a bundling process by which I think the offer could be mixed and so on. And so it means diversification of their offer not only linear services, but also on-demand services in order to generate a global, global service. It could be also, in parentheses, uh, 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 the next challenges for uh, these global platforms we mentioned. Huh? Maybe at, uh, at the end of the day, Netflix will uh, offer uh, a big package of broadcasters, of channels. Uh, and finally, uh, I think uh, they, they will have to, to take into consideration also uh, that they, what they need is just to enter into the contents on the first window. I think uh, yeah, it is maybe more B2B uh, discussion, but uh, yeah. if you consider the production process, the cost of the IN TV series uh, higher and higher all around the world, and uh, the COVID crisis will uh, will increase again this uh, this um, this move. Uh, it means that the national market won't be enough to finance such IN TV series. So you need these global platforms, but. The fact is, do you need to, to have 100% of your needs paid by one player? So, and will it be possible in the years to come? Okay, they did that in, in order to enter into a market for few TV series. In terms of volume, there are very few. Huh? The, the, the main volume in Europe is still financed by traditional broadcasters and not at all by these players. So I think one of the future of the production will be the windowing of audiovisual uh, yeah, contents, meaning the fact that you can have a traditional uh, yeah, and national broadcaster, which will invest a lot to have what I may say, the preview window with mass audience, with big marketing, uh, yeah, uh, process managed by himself and after that a second window open to uh, yeah, these global services which make possible for the content to uh, be uh, to, uh, to, to be accessible for all the subscribers in the world but I think the windowing process is also part of the reaction of the broadcasters because if they are challenging the uh, uh, Netflix and Co on IN TV series, 100% fi financed by them, it means that they finance only two TV drama by, per year, and it's the end of a national production. So it won't be the good business model. So the good business model is just a very clever uh, organization of the financing process, and so 
a windowing process by which we organize also a circulation of the work between the market of mass audience and the market of uh, targeted audience. And uh, yeah, just yeah, uh, finally, as a conclusion, the, the problem of uh, yeah, the programs uh, yeah, on uh, these global players is the fact that they are uh, worldwide and uh, for the perpetuity uh, in a certain way on one platform. So when I was talking about the circulation of the work, which is the second uh, end of the di cultural diversity, it is the ability for the people to reach over, uh, over culture. It is uh, quite limited with uh, these platforms. So we, we face also the challenge of the ability of, uh, the ability of uh, these works to circulate in a certain way and so to exit from these platforms to be sent traditionally to uh, national broadcasters, to be distributed, to be uh, marketed and so, and, uh, yeah, and so on. And so for that also, we'll need to, uh, to, to find solutions with these platforms. Uh, in one hand, okay, they, uh, they invest a lot and I understand that they, they want to keep exclusivity. But in another hand, the exclusivity process, if it's not linked to a bundling process, it is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, a new age of the piracy. Because everybody wants to see uh, the new TV drama on Netflix and so on. But if I am not a, a subscriber on Netflix, the only way for me to, to find it, it's the piracy. So uh, we have to, uh, and the piracy, it is our affair to all. It is, a, it is a problem for everyone. So exclusivity market, we, 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 we didn't have time to talk about that, but the exclusivity process is also fascinating and it, it has to be changed in the years to come. It has changed a lot uh, yeah, in the last five years, but it will, it will change a lot again because the exclusivity without a bundling process, it is for sure uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the increase of the piracy everywhere in the world. Are you ready?